Live from Studio G in the heart of America, I'm Steve. We're fighting for you every day from the foxhole of freedom to defend what freedoms we have left and being brutally honest every step of the way. Thank you for being here to start this week. It is the Steve Gruber Show, and here are three big things you need to know right now. Number one, a big discovery in Minnesota could help lift the spirits of medical equipment manufacturers and, well, birthday parties too. A giant helium pool helping avert a crisis of the shortage of that gas in America. Number two, a giant snowstorm has put California back in the black for the snowpack. Great news for the state when it comes to replenishing drinking water and keeping farms from going dry. I mean, it's a remarkable amount of snow. I-90 still closed. Number three, the overwhelming number of people coming into America illegally was underscored Friday. More than 1,000 people attended the funeral of Lake and Riley in Woodstock, Georgia. An overflow crowd has caught the nation's attention. The 22-year-old nursing student was brutally beaten to death in the middle of the University of Georgia campus in the middle of the day a week and a half ago on an ordinary, otherwise normal Thursday morning. Lakin's mother broke the silence by the family by saying her faith in Jesus Christ is helping her and her family get through what she called an avoidable tragedy. An avoidable tragedy. She's absolutely right. The swarm of illegal aliens that is somewhere between 7 and 10 million people in just the last few years is causing massive stress on major cities. And the invasion is also directly related to too many deaths that were also very avoidable. Murders like Lake and Riley, Americans killed by illegal drunk drivers, plus the course, the course that has been set that brings fentanyl into this country, claiming hundreds of lives every single day. And all the other crimes that are not reported. And either way, are explained away by local authorities that are trying to deny the damage they've done to America with these awful policies. Awful policies. The sacred city of Denver, among those places floundering under the weight of the invasion. How about an elderly woman on a fixed income? She went to discuss the cost of living in that city at the city council meeting. Here's part of what she said. If we look at Denver with 40,000 immigrants, and we think that they cost a thousand dollars a month for housing. It's going to be four hundred and eighty million dollars for one year. That's just the thousand dollars, and I don't think you can get housing for that. If you feed those people forty thousand at two hundred dollars a month per person, I don't think that's possible today. If any of you have gone to the grocery store, that's ninety six million in a year. We are headed for a tsunami. I don't think you know what you're heading at. The total of that, $576 million. Your budget, if I am correct, and I Googled it, I might be wrong, is only $72 million. I ask you how you think you're going to afford it. Ah, yes. How are you going to afford that, paying for all these illegals? By the way, she went on to explain she's on a fixed income of $30,000 a year. $10,000 of which has been gobbled up by taxes, new taxes, endeavor to pay for. You got it, the mess that's going on. And what is Joe Biden's open border cronies doing about this existential threat to America? Not a damn thing. And that's falsely blaming President Donald Trump and Republicans is actually considered a legitimate response, which, of course, it's not. Or repeating the lies about how the border is actually secure. If that's considered doing something, okay, but it's not. And that's why a shock poll shows President Donald Trump now has a commanding lead over Joe Biden among Hispanic voters. And why is he pulling further away in just about every poll? Well, I think you know why. It all leads to a re-election of Donald Trump as the polls are showing all the momentum right now heading in just one direction. Listen. Our CBS News poll out this morning shows the former president with a four-point edge over the current president among likely voters nationwide. That is Trump's largest general election lead yet in our surveys this cycle. Yeah, the biggest lead yet in this election cycle. And I repeat... The biggest question of all today, it's been the same question now for three years running. How many people have to die? How many? How many people have to die from our open border before something's done about it? 
before they tell the truth. Whatever the answer, we clearly have not reached that number yet because the crisis and the failures of leadership continue to start the week this week again. How many gangbangers from Venezuela have to come here? You know, they've emptied their prisons and their jails, even though the mainstream media says there's no evidence of that. Of course there's evidence of that, a lot of it. How many young people have to die from an overdose today? How many armed robberies? How many rapes? How many other violent crimes? What have we had enough to reject the lies and the clear and present danger the ongoing crisis has created? The ongoing crisis and the ongoing clear and present danger of politicians in Washington, too. President Trump says the illegal invasion is planned and has only one priority. Sounds like something I would say. Here he is. Biden and his accomplices want to collapse the American system, nullify the will of the actual American voters, and establish a new base of power that gives them control for generations. Yeah, for generations. What's remarkable is that Donald Trump was elected the first time in large part because of the border problems in this country. And the Democrats have committed an indefensible crime against our nation with their failed policies at the border. It's also propelled the political comeback of Donald Trump that I have to be honest, is pulling in more people than he has ever had before. It's not just Hispanic voters, it's black voters, it's union voters and working class voters all across America. It really is a movement more powerful than what he did in 2015 and 2016. President Trump has never lost his base. Those folks were never gonna leave in the first place. But Joe Biden and the Democrats have created a scenario where the GOP and the America First agenda, the America First agenda could rule the day for years to come, Trump in 24. Then his VP for a couple of terms or another America First candidate, either way, and a revival of American leadership, not only at home, but on the world stage, too. But Trump has to close the deal now. He does have to close the deal now. With those former Democrat and independent voters, he has to come all the way through and complete the win. He cannot rest. I'm not saying he is, certainly not saying that, because he's burning up the track with stop after stop on the campaign trail. He's pulling in huge crowds. The money's following, too. In fact, he just made nice with the club for growth. Yeah, they've not been friends for the last couple of years. And with that kind of swing, who knows, maybe Americans for Prosperity will come home too. They just mounts their Bidenomics.com. Maybe, wouldn't quite bet on that one yet, but look. It's time to close the sale. And he's got a new statement about it, does Donald Trump. I'll tell you about that coming up in just a moment here. Good to have you here, hope you had a great weekend. A lot to cover as we get into this week and every week. Super Tuesday is tomorrow. You know, Nikki Haley won the primary in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Completely meaningless, but she'll claim that she's on her path. Oh, she's not on it. It's D.C., where 92% of the people voted for Democrat Joe Biden. Uh, Nikki Haley winning there is probably a black eye for her campaign, not a, not a gold star. But we have Donald, Donald Trump's new I don't know, catchphrase, I guess, after the break here on The Steve Gruber Show.